So here at home, a News Nation exclusive, former Vice President Mike Pence is calling on former President Trump to apologize. Pence telling our Leland Vittert that the former president made a big mistake in agreeing to a meeting last week with Kanye West, and he brought along a guest, a known white nationalist, Nick Fuentes. President Trump was wrong uh, uh, to give a, a white nationalist uh, uh, an anti-Semite and a Holocaust denier a seat at the table. And uh, I think he should apologize for it, uh, and he should denounce those individuals uh, uh, and their hateful rhetoric without qualification. With that being said, as I point out in the book as well, I, I, I don't believe Donald Trump is an anti-Semite. I don't believe he's a racist or a bigot. I, I would not have been his vice president if he was. And, uh, you know, people often forget the, the president's daughter converted to Judaism. Yep. His son-in-law is a devout Jew. Um, his grandchildren are Jewish. And so I, uh, you know, the broad brush of attack that media leveled at him. But uh, I, I think the president demonstrated uh, profoundly poor judgment uh, in, in giving those individuals a seat at the table. And as I said, I think he should apologize for it. He should denounce them without qualification. Uh, this morning also we're getting reaction as Pence did not rule out mounting a 2024 run against Mr. Trump. Our Leland Vittert, host of On Balance, joining me right now. Uh, good morning to you. I know you had a lot going on last night. Uh, but uh, Mr. Pence, he's been more vocal as of late, as mild-mannered as he is. He's still calling out the former president. Is that surprising? Well, he's got a book, and he has split with the former president, uh, clearly, uh, over January 6th. He, and we talked about this last night. One of the most mo loyal member, if not the most loyal member, of the Trump-Pence administration. He never leaked. I covered him for four years in Washington. I never spoke out uh, publicly or privately and showed any kind of daylight between him and President Trump. And post-January 6th, he is and uh, trying to not necessarily distance himself from what happened during those four years, because uh, he still uh, really full-throatedly defends uh, what he would call the successes of the Trump Pence administration and wants credit for those, but certainly wants to distance himself from Donald Trump to set himself up as his own uh, potential 2024 candidate. I do have to say this, though, because I know that former President Trump did respond after this meeting, and he said he didn't even know who Nick Fuentes was. The meeting was supposed to be one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, would you predict that President Trump or former President Trump is not going to apologize for a meeting he didn't know was going to happen? Well, if history tells us anything, President Trump hasn't apologized for anything, uh, starting with the Mexicans or rapist comments going back to 2015. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, and you might be waiting for a long time for an apology. The idea that President Trump didn't know who this person was is just absolute hogwash. Former President of the United States, an enormous staff paid for by taxpayers because uh, presidential offices are. Uh, and the idea that they didn't know exactly uh, the views of Kanye West and Fuentes and had briefed President Trump on them is just absolutely laughable. And it would have been very easy for President Trump to, to prove otherwise by firing who was ever involved in setting up the dinner and repudiating what Fuentes says, which he's done neither of. Let's go on to some more from your interview with Pence. Uh, he wouldn't say if he'd run for president, not for certain, but he did tell you no. this. Let's listen. What I've heard again and again from people is they want to get back to the policies of the Trump-Pence years, but they want leadership that at least has the chance of uniting our country around our highest ideals, beginning with civility. I'm confident Republican primary voters uh, will have better choices for 2024. So you asked him point blank about running mates if he were to run, keyword if. You mentioned Glenn Youngkin, you mentioned Ron DeSantis. He actually laughed out loud uh, when you did mention this. However, do you think that's a possibility, a Pence-DeSantis ticket? Well, look, if anything told us, you know, that what it will never predict the future, it's the way the 2015 Republican presidential primary uh, season started and then the way it ended in 2016 and then President Trump and then Vice President Pence winning in 2016, which is completely uh, unpredicted uh, and unpredictable. I also asked Pence if he would ever be another vice president uh, candidate, if he would accept someone else's nomination. Uh, and he, I got an emphatic no, which is kind of uh, rare when you ask these guys hypothetical questions like this two years out. Uh, that said, I'm sure. 
And, and who knows what we might see. What I was trying to get at with, with him in, in that question is, does he view the, the MAGA without the crazy brand as better represented by Ron DeSantis, who is far more uh, vocal, far more in the vein of President Trump, of, of picking fights, of going after the media, of really embracing the culture war um, from a media and social media standpoint? Or does he view Glenn Youngkin, uh, who's sort of the quiet uh, tactician, if you will, um, who talks a lot more about bringing people together and creating a coalition and on and on, and won in a Biden plus 10 state uh, that Virginia was, or maybe even Biden plus 12 state, uh, that, that that is the future of the Republican Party. And these are two very distinct wings of the party. Uh, and Mike Pence has not really chosen either one uh, to to really get behind and become part of and represent. Yeah, it sounds like he's trying to uh, create his own lane, but I don't know that the Republican Party has enough room uh, for all of that. But let's talk about Pence responding to the personal attacks on his faith while in office. Let's listen. I never thought that I would actually be criticized for being um, a Bible-believing Christian. I never thought my wife would be criticized. Many in the national press, not all, but, but many are, are very foreign to the traditions of faith that really animate the lives of, of tens of millions of Americans. Do you think that he's speaking for people who maybe feel that they haven't been represented? Well, that, that's who voted in 2016. Remember, the people who put uh, the Trump-Pence uh, ticket in the White House, uh, and, and Vice President Pence knows this, and he was the the outreach can the outreach candidate to the evangelical uh, community during the election in 2016 and 2020, and then uh, sort of in charge of evangelical outreach when he was at the White House. Um, it was evangelical Christians in Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, and uh, Ohio uh, who put President Trump over uh, the high water mark. Uh, those were the key voters uh, that swung hard to Republicans, uh, that made the difference. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he, he wants to try and, and keep hold of those voters. Um, and and that, would be his, that would be his base uh, if he is going to uh, run and be successful in 2024. Uh, it's going to revolve around uh, evangelical Christians who feel as though uh, they've been ostracized and... Uh, sort of ridiculed by uh, the media, uh, by especially by the Washington Press Corps, and they've been taken for granted by Republicans. Leland Vitter, as always, great to see you and to see what you've brought us on On Balance. You can watch more every weeknight at 7 Eastern, 6 Central Time. Thank you again. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.